I think it's hard for any of us to debate the desirability of early detection, of the use of diagnostic, um, diagnostic systems that would improve the diagnostic rate. We know that there's roughly a 15% inaccuracy in diagnoses. Um, the detection of new treatments, looking at massive databases of individuals with similar conditions and finding out biomarkers or at least data points that we can then apply to the rest of the population and see whether that indicates that they have a high likelihood of having that condition. And the fourth aspect I think we should talk about here is what's been called personalized medicine or precise medicine, which is these large databases are helping us look more closely at the fact that we aren't all the same. We have very different bodies. We have very different propensities for different kinds of conditions. We live very different lifestyles. And it would be nice if we could target the appropriate treatment for people. That becomes a big issue, for example, with, with cancers, that you can be put through round after round after round of chemotherapies, but none of them is effective. So it would be nice if through genetic markers or other factors we could distinguish which of the chemotherapies would be most likely to, um, to produce a cure for you if you went through that regime rather than going through three or four or 10 regimes and having, having poor results. And there are even other areas where we're now seeing that, um, that certain people have the chemical pathways, the metabolic pathways where certain drugs work, but other drugs don't work. So Dr. Gilbert Ruano up in Connecticut, he discovered this for depression. And that people have been on antidepressants for decades even with a class of medications that just won't work in their bodies. They don't have the, the correct biomarkers for that. But the difficulty is to distinguish that, you need to look at, you need to go through a genetic test, which have become cheaper and cheaper, look at three specific genes, and the insurance companies have to pay for it. So here, let me shift into here's where the difficulties come in. The insurance companies have been loath to authorize these kinds of genetic tests because they think that a lot of them will be frivolous. And therefore, you almost have to prove to them in advance that this is not a frivolous test, and they have to understand that it will lower their costs. Secondly, let's talk about costs, because I've lived a lifetime now where all these technological costs are going to lower health care costs. <laughs> but the reality is it never happened and probably never will. So in the United States, we spend over $3 trillion, roughly $3.05 trillion every year on health care. That makes our health care budget alone larger than the total gross domestic product of France and only a half a trillion dollars less than the gross domestic product of that powerhouse Germany. Furthermore, we get less bang for our health care buck than almost any other country in the world. And to move on, the argument has been that technology, not just these digital technologies will lower our health care costs. But what's happening is health care costs grow at 6% every year. And roughly 50% of that is technology expenses, either the adoption of new technologies or the proliferation of existing technologies. Everybody wants the best health care, so every hospital and every clinic should have an fMRI machine. The difficulty is those are very expensive, and there's probably no re reason for every institution to have that. But if they don't have that, or if they don't have the latest robotic surgery, you may not go to that healthcare clinic because you think that these technologies are what we need.